Hello friends, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. I am Vicki and you're with Grammy in the Kitchen. So, we're not in the kitchen, we're actually outside. We're gonna go ahead and finish our little garden. So when we planted the potatoes, which I'll show you how they look, they're just right over there. They're doing beautiful. We picked up some jalapeno poppers and some basil. And then we had the cilantro that Tammy had given us. And I had some cilantro from last year and some spinach. We're gonna go ahead and get all this in the ground today or in pots today. So that is the same soil we used for our potatoes. And I have all of these pots that we're gonna be planting in. But let me show you, let me show you the potatoes. So you can see they're starting to grow beautiful flowers or leaves, growing beautiful leaves. Oh, they're so pretty. You can see it right there. But they all have leaves in there. So my potatoes are doing great. Absolutely gorgeous. But we're going to go ahead and get started on the other plants. We're going to do the jalapeno first. It says you have to start indoors, but we did not start these indoors. We're just going to start them outside. We have to sow them a quarter inch deep into individual containers filled with seed starting formula. Keep moist. Seedlings emerge in 10 to 21 days. Before transplanting, move to shelter outdoors for a week but we're not doing that. So we're just gonna plant these in pots. And it says it's container friendly, one per, one plant per container, and we need a 12 inch can, container. I have one, two, three, four, I have five, six, and that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna make six of these. So this one had dirt in it from last year. But I'm just gonna add a little bit of this dirt to it. So we have six filled. Now we're going to put our jalapeno peppers in there. And we only need six. I'm going to put two in each pot.
And this is what I have left. And I'll just date this with this year's date. And they should be good for next year. Jalapenos are done. Now I'm gonna work on the basil. I'm gonna put the basil in this big plant but pot, plus I have another big one. Sow in average soil in full sun after danger of frost. Sow seeds about six inches apart and cover with quarter inch of fine soil. Firm and lightly and keep evenly moist. Seedlings emerge in seven to 14 days. Harvest when buds begin to form up after frost. Says so we can put three per container in a 12 inch container. These are obviously bigger than 12 inches. So we're going to do four. And they are teeny tiny, teeny tiny. And then on another day, we'll plant the cilantro and we'll plant the spinach. Now I'm going to go ahead and water them.
had to mute that because the neighbors came outside into their backyard and they're cleaning out their cars so they had their music up just a little bit and I don't want to get unauthorized music on my film so I had to mute that but you saw where I labeled the basil basil and I know the others are jalapeno peppers I have the long planters that go on the railing I'm gonna put that on my deck and that's where I'm gonna put the cilantro but I need to get dirt for that and also I have a little spot right next to the steps over here you saw where the potatoes were in their steps on the other side of those steps that's where I'm going to be putting the spinach so I need to get some more dirt and don't worry don't worry you're coming along with me I go ahead and tidy up the kitchen and then I'm gonna go ahead and get started on dinner so I have the oven set for 350 degrees. Let's go ahead and get started on this meatloaf. So I have two pounds of ground turkey. Use any ground meat you like. But first we're going to start off with, I believe it's called a panage. I might be saying that wrong. You can take crackers or you could take breadcrumbs or bread. I, so I'm just going to break that up into this little bowl. I have a little bit of milk that I just made with some A2, A2 milk powder with some water. We're going to just put just a couple, maybe one tablespoon, two tablespoons. And we're just going to mush this together. We're just going to let that soak for a bit. Before we get in here with our hands and mush this together, we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt, quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, it does a bit. We're going to add a teaspoon of onion powder. A teaspoon of garlic powder and a whole tablespoon of Italian seasoning. We're going to add one egg. Let's check our bread mixture. All right, so it's nice and softened. We're going to go ahead and add that in here. we're going to add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I do want to add a little bit of oil to our pan. So I have avocado oil. Now we're going to go ahead and mix it up with our hands. Now you don't want to over mix your ground meat. It will turn tough when it cooks. You just want to mix it enough where all the ingredients are incorporated. Alright, that looks good to me. Like I said, just do it really quick and don't over mix it. I'm going to shake this into a loaf. The reason I don't cook this in a loaf pan is because the fat in this meat will be released and it could overspill. So I'd rather just do it in a casserole dish. All right, that looks good to me. Just washed my hands and I'm going to put this in the oven 
and we're going to cook this until it's done. I'll keep track of the time and let you know how long it takes, but you want the internal temperature because I am using poultry to be 160 degrees. So in the oven this will go. Now we're going to go ahead and get started on the smashed potatoes. So I went to the store yesterday and I picked up a bag of these very small red potatoes and yellow Yukons. They're each one and a half pounds, but I don't want to cook three pounds of potatoes. So I went ahead and measured out three quarters of a pound of each of those potatoes. And they're little, they're cute. So now we have potatoes for a future date. So in the very large cast iron pan here, we're going to add a little bit of avocado oil. We're going to heat the pan and heat that oil. Then we're going to toss in our potatoes. Just cook them just a little bit, not much. We don't want we're not cooking them all the way at this stage. We're actually going to be adding some water and we're going to be boiling them in this pan until they're done. You know where you can put a knife in and take it out. And then we're going to smash these and then season them. That was a total of one and a half pounds of potato, three quarters of a pound of the red, three quarters of the pound of the white. We're just going to cook these just a bit, just like this. Let them get all nice and coated in the oil. Meatloaf is at 150 degrees. We are not done yet. Just trying to put a little bit of color on these potatoes. Now this is because I'm only cooking one and a half pounds because it's just the husband and myself. But we do enjoy eating leftovers. So we'll have leftover potatoes, we'll have leftover meatloaf. So we'll have meatloaf and potatoes with some sort of a green on the side tonight. But then for the next couple days we can have meatloaf sandwich if we like or meatloaf and potatoes. I like to build in leftovers when I am preparing a meal because it allows me time to be able to do other things. I start seeing them get a little bit of color. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and slowly add in water. So that's two coffee cups of water till they're just about three quarters way up the potatoes. Now we're going to go ahead and add a good pinch of salt, two, some pepper, and some Italian seasoning, maybe a teaspoon. I'm going to turn that to a medium low. I'm going to cover them. I do not have a cover for this pan, so I'm just going to be using a pizza pan for it. We're going to let that cook until they're fork or knife tender. They're starting to come up to a boil. That's what we want. And we're going to let all this water evaporate once we get a nice rolling boil and the potatoes are almost fork tender. Our potatoes are boiling. I have the lid on but I do have a small crack just so it doesn't boil over. Our meatloaf has reached 160 degrees. It took one hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the oven off, but I'm leaving the meatloaf in the oven. 
are not quite ready yet. I'm going to leave the top off so the water can evaporate and cook the potatoes at the same time. Just get them a toss to make sure they're cooking evenly. It is they're still cooking in the water. The water is evaporating. That is our meatloaf. And because it was cooked with turkey, it is not going to brown like beef or pork. But that's okay. As soon as this water evaporates, we're going to go ahead and mash these beautiful potatoes. Um, knife tender, just so the knife can go in there very easily with no resistance. We're just going to take a jar, very carefully just go in here and smash them. Not completely flat, just open them up a bit. Be very careful and don't burn yourself. Some are a little easier than the others. Some I'm just smashing a little bit too much. But that's okay. We got this. Right, that is good. We're going to add a little bit of onion powder and garlic powder. Maybe a half a teaspoon of each. Sprinkle it all the way around. Decided I want to go ahead and make some gravy. So I move the potatoes to the back of the stove and, and here I have a little bit of olive oil and butter. I'm adding a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. We're making a roux and a roux is going to be equal fats to equal flour. So I have three quarters of a tablespoon of olive oil and three quarters of a tablespoon of butter. So we'll need one and a half tablespoon of flour. We're going to let that cook for about a minute. And I have a little bit of milk. This is just an A2, A2 milk powder. Rehydrate it with some water. About a, one cup. Then I have some turkey broth. Then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm just going to let that thicken up. Just taste it for salt and pepper. Our potatoes are done. All the water has then evaporate it. Oh, they look and smell delicious. The gravy does need a gravy does need a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Mm. 
Meatloaf is done. Let's go ahead and take it out of this pan. I'm gonna go ahead and slice it up. I sliced mine about between a half and three quarters of an inch. Smells delicious. Oh my goodness. I love Italian seasoning. And I'm just going to put it in this bowl. Add a little piece. I'm going to taste it. Oh yeah. Really good. There's smashed potatoes. Just gonna put that around the meatloaf. And our gravy. I'm just going to pour right on top of everything. And that's what's for dinner. Go ahead and scoop a couple of these potatoes out. Oh no, can't lose potatoes. Take a meatloaf. Ah, uh, looks beautiful. All right, so I have a little bit of our smashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Season beautiful. Mm. Cooked, tender, and our meatloaf. Mm. Perfect. Perfect. The flavor is spot on. That's really good. I think the husband's going to be happy with this when he gets home from work. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So, I just want to say thank you for spending this short time with me. Got to show you my potatoes. It Tomorrow will actually be three weeks when we put those in the ground. And as the jalapenos are starting to flower in the spinach i'll bring you along let you see how they're growing and then as we're harvesting you'll be part of that also i'm planning on getting a couple more containers so my goal is if i can't grow a year's worth of everything which i know i can't i want to grow a year's worth of herbs because herbs i can dry and then I can have my own dried homegrown herbs. And that's my goal. So just want to say thank you for spending the day with me. And if you would go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And while you're at it, please subscribe. We would love to have you part of the Grammy family. And until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Bye, friends.